Secrets of the Soul B. H. W. Hodgetts, William, from lovethemeaninggoflife.com Spiritual Evolution, Love the Meaning of Life and Oasis for Spiritual Searchers. What is the soul? Losing the self. Throughout history, mankind has accumulated a massive amount of knowledge about the material, physical realm, and yet so little is known about that which perceives and explores this outer realm. It appears that most of mankind are blind to themselves, seeing only a world that they are continuously trying to manipulate to their advantage. Everyone in this mode experiences suffering, both emotionally and physically. It is like a treadmill that you cannot get off. People become servants of that which should only serve. There is a way to gain freedom once more, a way to become the master by regaining your peace and power. You must come to know yourself, and understand how people function. You need an answer to the second greatest question, what am I? What is the soul? Let's take a look. What is consciousness? I want you to stop for a moment and take a look around you. Now ask yourself, who is it that is looking out through those eyes? Now ask yourself, how did I know that what I saw exists? How do I know that I exist? You see, you know that what you see is real because it affects you, and you are aware of the affect. Consciousness is awareness, you know that you exist because you are aware of yourself. It is said, when you recognize what is in your sight, that which is hidden from you will become plan. That which is hidden is the self. The self is consciousness, consciousness is awareness of the self and all that is not the self, let us take a look at the soul, and there we can take a closer look at awareness, consciousness. The soul revealed. Most of mankind has been given the impression that the soul is a singular thing, i.e. that the soul and mind are one or that the self is the mind. This is why so few in the history of mankind have come to know themselves, and thereby step out of the illusion and into truth. Even those who have no belief in the spiritual, and have come to believe that the brain is no more than a biological computer, have come to believe that the mind, memories and consciousness are a combined single and overall affect, spread throughout the brain. We will see here that both beliefs are wrong. When you wake in the morning and begin interacting with the world, it is as if you are living in it. Even now, as you read these words you are in the world. It is as if the world is all that is real, and yet when you find yourself in deep thought, or dreaming when you sleep, you find yourself in another place. Both places are real because you are aware of both and both affect you. Only that which is real can have an effect or be perceived. Now ask yourself, if you are seeing images in the mind when in deep thought or dreaming, where are you? You are not the images because you are observing them and to observe them, they must be outside of and separate from the self. The soul is in two parts and both are separate from the material, physical realm. There is the self and the place we call the mind, which is the self's domain. Both the self and the mind domain are real, they exist, and they are not of the same nature as the material, physical. So now we have three different, separate and distinct forms of reality. The physical, material, the self which is conscious aware, and the mind which is the self's domain. Let us start by taking a look at the self. The self revealed. You are a conscious entity, living in the center of a domain that we call mind. You cannot leave your domain, mind, even though what you perceive there gives you the illusion that you can. You are not your domain, mind, but all that is there, has an effect on you. There are some things that I have to reveal that may be difficult for some to bear, but they are necessary if you are to rule over the all and become an enlightened and free spirit, the path was never easy but always worth its traveling. Though you may think that your domain is a prison, it is in reality a fortress, a haven, a kingdom where you reign supreme, a place where you can reach out into infinity, eternally a place where all things that can be imaged, are possible. In God's image each of us has been created in the image of our Creator, that is to say we are conscious beings with desire and will, that have been created by an infinite being that is conscious and has desire and will. We are made of the same form of spiritual substance, and in the same manner as our Creator. We are its children who are learning, and growing in knowledge and power, until we become of the same nature as our Creator, the same in mind and priorities, until that which is done of love is always our first and only choice. Many heavens. Everything that exists is made from the source vibrations. The only difference between one thing and another is the state that the source has formed into. The ingredients that make up everything, in both the spiritual and material realms, are packages of vibrations. 
There are many different kinds of packages of vibrations, each having its own frequency and amplitude, i.e. the amount of time it takes to vibrate and the size of the vibration. You can imagine them as components or building blocks. These building blocks that are all made from, and of the source have many combinations and these are divided into different sets, each being a part of a different reality. For instance, there are sets that make up the material, physical realm, and there are sets that make up the spiritual realm. Each set can be seen to make up a different heaven or plane of reality. The self is capable of experiencing all levels of reality, i.e. all heavens, while at the same time, remaining separate from them. The kingdom of heaven is inside of you, and outside of you, that is, it is yourself and your domain, what am I? The self is made up of an incredible amount of packages of vibrations that are of the highest spiritual set. The result being, an entity that is so sophisticated and complex, that it is free-willed, aware of itself and all that affects it. When a soul is created, the self's overall condition is a state of vibration that we relate to as peace. This is the state where the self is unaffected by vibrations from its domain and it is the self's natural state. The self perceives everything as vibrations which come from outside of itself such as from, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell and even thoughts. All vibrations that come from outside of the self either raise or lower the natural state of vibration of the self. When the level of vibration of the self is raised, it is perceived as pleasure, when it is lowered it is perceived as pain. When no outside vibrations are received by the self, from its domain, then the self becomes fully aware of its own vibrations, self-aware. We call awareness of vibrations, feelings, I feel therefore I am. Awareness, desire and will. The self has three attributes and these are, awareness, desire and will. It is the change in vibrations that are of the self that are awareness itself. To be aware is to be affected and know it, that is to say, to retain an image or memory of one's previous vibrational state and compare it to one's present state. If there were no images in your domain mind, then there would be nothing to cause a change in your vibrational state, you would be without awareness. This is what happens between sleeping and dreaming or awakening. Where there is no change in the self's vibrational state, time cannot be perceived. To be outside of time is to be unaware of change. Our Creator is not unaware of change and so is not outside of time. To change from one vibrational state to another, is movement and repose, it is life. Desire came because of knowledge. If the self was without knowledge, it would have no desire, because it would remain in its natural vibrational state and it would not experience either pain or pleasure. When the self's vibrational state is heightened, it becomes less compacted and less restricted, thereby making it easier to perform its will. This is the state of pleasure and freeness. When the self's vibrational state is lowered, it has the opposite effect. Desire occurs when the memory image of a higher vibrational state is recalled, or when a new image of a higher vibrational state is created. Even the desire for death or the desire to suffer in payment for a wrong is a desire for a higher state, usually one of peace. Will is the ability to control and affect that which is outside of the self. The result being an effect returned upon the self, i.e. we reap what we sow, we are affected by what we create. Everything that we do creates an image in our domain and every one of our images affects us first. If an image is created with the intention of what is good and right, then we benefit, even if it is for another person's benefit. If however, it is for self-pleasure that causes pain or loss to someone else, then we also cause pain and loss to ourselves in the future. It sets us back in our journey and when realization comes as to the wrong we did, then it is paid for in suffering. In doing good or bad to others, we are demonstrating the rules of behavior that others may be drawn to follow. That is why we should treat others as we would like to be treated. In all events karma is eventually fulfilled perfectly. Images D self as a living spiritual orb. Its outer surface is comprised of incredibly sensitive and powerful receivers and transmitters of vibrations. This is how it interacts with what is outside of it. Everything that is received by the orb's receptors, affects the overall vibration of the orb self. The orb self is in a constant struggle to achieve a state of vibration that it perceives as its natural state, i.e. at peace, or a state that is higher i.e. pleasure. Any state below is perceived as pain. 
To give you an idea of size comparison, you can imagine the orb self as being the size of a football, and the receivers and transmitters as the size of atoms on the surface of the football. The domain mind that the orb self resides in is a spiritual medium that can transfer vibrations just as radio waves are carried through the ether. It can also store sets of vibrations which we call images, thoughts. There are visual images, thoughts, and there are sensed images that have no visual representation. The self perceives everything as images through the receivers on its surface, and this includes sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, thoughts and even vibrations that come from other souls' domains. Let us look at images and the soul domain which is the place that we live in. The soul domain has only three functions. There is a place to permanently store images for recall i.e. memory. An area for creation and manipulation of images. And an area for interaction with the physical body. All thoughts are visual images. They are two-dimensional, just like a photo or painting. A series of images one after the other gives the appearance of a changing scene, just like a film strip. Memories. Every single image that forms in the domain is permanent, and they are stored like pages in a book. Every image that the self has perceived as stored, according to its importance, or the self's desire, in other words, they are placed in a filing system for future reference. You can imagine the area of the soul domain that images are stored in, as a filing cabinet, the most used images being stored in the top drawer and the least used in the bottom drawer. I have only shown a two-drawer filing cabinet here, but of course there would be many drawers. None of our memories stored images are in our awareness until we retrieve them, which means that all memories are in the subconscious away from awareness. The subconscious therefore actually refers to lower filed images, it is because the self chooses where to store images, that it is able to store images deep in its memory files, and in effect deny their re-entry into awareness. This usually happens due to the fear of re-experiencing painful events. When the experience of one's life flashing before them occurs, it is actually the self retrieving its most important images, because it fears losing them. Of course, this only happens when the self believes it is close to death. When memories are retrieved they are brought into the creation area of the domain and re-experienced. Creating. The next area of the self's domain that we will deal with, is the creation area. The self uses its transmitters to create images in its domain. As an analogy, you can imagine the transmitters as a paintbrush, the transmitted vibrations as paint, and the domain as a canvas. All images have an effect on the self, because they either raise or lower the self's vibrational state. All acquired knowledge is stored as images in the memory, and each image is like a picture that is a collection of small images. Imagine an image of a bowl of fruit. Each piece of fruit is a separate image and so is the bowl and yet they make up one image. When the self creates a new image, it does so by taking parts of its stored images memories to compose a new image, which then affects the self's vibrational state. All images that the self creates are done so with its own reasoning ability. Reasoning is based on the self's personal store of images memories of causes and effects. Reasoning allows the self to visualize possible future events, based on any actions it might take, or how any events beyond its control may affect it. Knowledge is a collection of experiences in the form of retained images memories. It is said by some that we are the sum total of our experiences, and yet it is plain, that our experiences are in the form of recorded images, stored outside of the self. It is like saying a physical body is the sum total of the material possessions it owns. The self is not the sum total of its experiences because the self is not its memories. The self is independent of what it perceives, only the self's vibrational state can be altered. When the self creates in the material world, it is in effect, copying that which it has already created in its domain mind. The images that the self creates and stores in its domain, are not all valid or verified because the self can create images that only come from fear or desire, based on its reasoning of possible future events. These are what we call illusions, and yet they are stored in the same way as real images. You can take H squared zero water and change its vibrational state so that it becomes ice, liquid or steam, but it still remains as H squared zero water. Soul – Body Connection The soul's domain merges with the brain to form an interface between the self and the body. 
It is here that information in the form of vibrations is able to cross the barrier between the two realms. The self and a part of its domain are able to move away from the brain while still retaining its connection. This results in what appears to be a cord. The cord relays information both ways in the form of vibrations, which can be termed as signals, and it is incredibly elastic, but it has limits, and when the limits are reached, the soul's domain gives up some of its volume to create more of what we refer to as a cord. The outer edge of the soul's domain, just like the inside, is a medium that transfers vibrations to the self and so is sensitive to vibrations outside as well as inside. In effect, the soul's domain is to the self what the physical sensors eyes, ears, nose etc. are to the brain. Sense and nonsense. Sense is awareness of change. A sensor is that which is aware of change. Sensitive is the degree of awareness of change. The words sense, sensor and sensitive can only relate to awareness or that which is aware, the self. Single words with multiple meanings create illusion and confusion. To sense something is to be aware of it consciously. That which has been called our physical sensors eyes, ears, nose etc. are not really sensors, because they have no awareness. They are in fact, interfaces that convert one set of vibrations light, sound etc. into a different set. All vibrations from the physical interfaces are relayed to the soul domain, which is the common interface to awareness, the self. The self is the only thing that senses, it is the only thing that is capable of being aware. Individual senses are in fact, individual effects on awareness, just like different channels on a radio. The sixth interface, which is the self's domain, is what has been called the sixth sense, it brings into awareness that which is outside of the self's domain and that which cannot be received via the physical body. The sixth sense is the only sense, it is the self, the rest are non-sense interfaces. The soul's domain is the medium that carries vibration, information to the self. If you consider how we perceive a lighted candle, you will realize that, light reflects from the candle, falling on the eye, which then sends signals to the brain-soul interface, and onto the self through the medium of the soul's domain. When the soul moves away from the physical body, yet is still connected to it, as an obe out of the body experience, it receives its information from the outer surface of the soul's domain, instead of from the physical senses. In effect the self sees things from the puppet master's perspective instead of the puppets. The self that is in the center of the soul's domain can be seen as the puppet master. The physical body communication part of the soul's domain can be seen as the string holder. The soul to physical body connection can be seen as the strings. The physical body can be seen as the puppet. Now consider this. The puppet has cameras for eyes, the puppet master wears small video screens over his eyes, so that he only sees what the puppet sees, from the puppet's perspective. Let's make things a little more interactive, and put microphones in the puppet's ears, and connect them to headphones on the puppet master. After a while the puppet master becomes so immersed in this new virtual reality that he thinks he is the puppet. This is how we lose ourselves. We forget that we are the puppet master and think that we are the puppet, but we soon remember when the strings are cut. The only purpose for the physical body is as a tool for learning in an environment that is separate in nature to the spiritual realm. The physical, material realm is a place where the self can express its desires and free will, and gain knowledge through interaction with others. In this environment, the self learns through its right and wrong choices what is good and right, until it eventually becomes perfected in right choices. Each step towards perfection, reveals a little more of the spiritual reality, until eventually the self realizes its true nature, and in becoming self-aware, all is revealed to it. When the self confirms all that is good and right, and rejects all that is not good and right, it becomes incapable of harm or conflict, either in the material, physical realm, or the spiritual realm. It is then that the cycle of birth and death is ended and the soul returns to the place that it originated from. Acceptance of all that is good and right is the way. Focus of awareness. You can only focus on one thing at a time? Focus results in clarity of perception. Try the following examples. Begin tapping your finger on something without stopping, and count the taps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Keep repeating this. As you tap and count in your mind, go back to the top of the page and start reading. You will find that you can't do both at the same time and that your focus is on one then the other.
Did you forget to count but kept on tapping? You probably think that you were focusing on two things at the same time, but did you notice that your reading was in time with tapping? Try speeding up with your reading while keeping the tapping speed as it was. When there is more than one thing to be focused on at the same time, one will always receive the greatest focus, and the self will attempt to organize the time spent on each separately. Try reading or watching a movie when someone is talking to you. Try looking at a picture and you will realize that you are not seeing all of it clearly. Your focus will only be on one part and the rest will be out of focus. We go through life seeing everything but very little is perceived clearly. It is as if most of it is blurred, yet still seen. Awareness has to deal with many things. These things are not dealt with simultaneously, but rather one at a time. Awareness transfers its focus at an incredible rate from one set of vibrations, image, to another. The self uses its receptors to scan many images in succession, spending the greatest amount of time on that which it considers the most important. Movement of focus of awareness is not restricted to the speed of light. A visual image that is like a movie of something you would like to experience such as a holiday, in a place you have not yet been, requires the retrieval of many stored images memories, which are then formed into new images which the self has to create, and yet the result is smooth. Imagine each image as a frame of a film strip, that you have created from parts of images that you already have. After each image is used, it has to be stored before the next one is used. When we look out through our physical eyes into the world, the self is scanning the image that it receives at an incredible rate, yet only the central part of the image is focused on. If you move your eyes the image changes, but focus on the center remains. Try to see what is clear and what is not. Try looking at this paragraph without focusing and you will feel your focus trying to latch on to something to focus on, and although the paragraph is in your field of vision, most of it is out of focus. At the same time that you are scanning images, focus of awareness also has to deal with sound, touch, taste, smell and has to check its stored images memories for comparison and reasoning. As you can see, while you are interacting with the world, that is where most of your focus of awareness as an awareness of the self is lost. When focus is in the self's domain, it is blind to the physical, material world, including the body. When focus is in the world it is blind to that which is in the self's domain. In both scenarios, it is blind to the outer spiritual domain. Meditation. Meditation requires a purpose. It can be used to focus on solving a problem in the domain mind, or to experience peace, or to try to connect with the outer spiritual realm, i.e. other souls, or to become self-aware. To solve a problem requires focus in the self's domain on stored images memories and the creation of new images for consideration. To experience peace, all images, except the ones required, must be cleared from the domain mind. This is usually done by focusing on a single image or sound. Once this is achieved the self soon becomes disinterested in the familiarity board and it stops focusing while still aware. This leaves awareness in an almost resting state, with nothing much to do and no pressing problems. Any method can be used that requires repetition and focus on something that is not normally necessary. To focus on the outer spiritual domain, requires a cleared domain, i.e. no focus on images or the self. To become self-aware requires a complete understanding that the self is completely separate from all that is outside of it. There is nothing within the self but the self. The self stands alone in its immortality, indestructible and only changed by that which it has acknowledged in its domain, suffering is a choice it makes in the pursuit of possessing that which is not capable of possessing. To become self-aware you must give up all that is not self. The only pleasure that comes without price or pain, is found in the company of those who have chosen to bond with you, in the way of all that is good and right, love. To live in peace you need nothing and must claim nothing. Love is a given thing, it cannot be taken. It is a gift that has to be given freely. Only that which has life can know love. When you come to know yourself, you will know truth, freedom and your creator. Then you, your true self, will become known. Sometimes you have to give in to win. That which is hidden is in your sight, yourself. All you need is a leap of faith.